Hey, what's going on guys? Curtis here with Wirefly and today we're going to be talking about Apple's event of September 9th, 2014. Let's get started. So I'm really excited to bring you guys this video, which is about, like I said, Apple's keynote that they held in Cupertino. It started at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time and well, they started off with the iPhone 6 and also the iPhone 6 Plus. As we already expected, it came in sizes of 4.6 and 5.5 inch displays. They are not going to be UHD displays or 2K displays, but they are going to have pretty nice resolution. They are both coming with Retina HD displays, which is a little bit better than the previous generation, just a regular Retina display. The iPhone 6 display is a 1334 by 750 display, and the iPhone 6 Plus display is a full HD display. Nothing that impressive, but I hope that helps with the battery life. They are way thinner than the previous generation, one coming in at 6.9 millimeters and the other coming in at 7.1 millimeters thin. Now that's very impressive. That means that even though they increased in size, they're not going to be very bulky, so they're going to fit perfectly in your pocket. And well, let's go back to the display. A bigger display means more screen real estate and that means you're going to be able to use your screen for more things than the usual or what we're used to. Messages are gonna look better, you're gonna have a little tab on the side, and you're gonna be able to view them on the right hand side of the screen, the same as mail. And the keyboard also, when you put it in a horizontal mode, you're gonna have more access to shortcuts or keys you need the most, which is gonna to help to type faster. The home button is on the side, so you're not gonna to have to reach all the way to the top. They also talk about performance of the new iPhone 6, which is 25 times faster than the previous chip. This iPhone 6 is 50 times faster than the first generation iPhone. And with bigger phones, that means bigger battery. And they didn't really talk about the battery size, but they just said it was going to have better battery. They also introduced the M8 chip, which is the next generation motion coprocessor. It measures motion from the accelerometer, the gyroscope, and the compass. This is going to help with the fitness part of the iPhone, which is going to help measure distance or elevation or anything like that. They also talked about using the latest antennas on their phones for 4G LTE with Volti, and they also talked about using Wi-Fi to make phone calls. If you don't have a good signal inside of your house, you can start your phone call using Wi-Fi. And if you walk outside and you go out of the Wi-Fi range, it automatically transfers a call to the closest antenna you're using and it goes directly to your cell phone service. Next, they talked about the camera, which yes, most of you are probably going to be disappointed because it's not a 13, 16, 20 megapixel camera, but it is an 8 megapixel camera. We all know that Apple products really take good pictures and they don't really need more than eight megapixels to take a good picture. What they did is put a five element lens into it, which means five different layers of lenses in this camera. It has all new sensors, so that means it's gonna take really good pictures and it has a true tone flash. It's gonna focus better, it's gonna take pictures faster, and you're even gonna be able to take panorama pictures up to 43 megapixels. And one big thing that Apple's also doing is that it's adding optical image stabilization. So talking about that, let's move on to video. Yes, it is gonna be able to take 1080p video and all that good stuff. And it's also gonna have the capability to take slow motion video. We know that the past iPhone could take 120 frames per second video, but this one is gonna include 240 frames per second video. Now that's what you call slow motion. They even claim that the iPhone replaced the point and shoot camera, which could be true. It has a better eyesight camera for FaceTime. It is HD and it gives you 80% more light. It is gonna improve your selfie game, so it's gonna detect your face when you wanna take a picture and it's gonna focus on that or anyone else who's in the picture. So that's gonna help so everybody it's in focus when you're taking those selfies. And like I said, so it improves your selfie game. It's gonna be able to take up to 10 pictures per second so you can choose that perfect one to upload to your social media. And of course, they're both coming with iOS 8. As soon as these are available, you're going to be able to buy a silicone case or a leather case. These keys are not that special, but they're nice to have. And if you were wondering how much memory they're going to have inside of them, both versions of this phone are going to come in 16, 64, and yes, 128 gigabytes. The iPhone 6 is going to be 199 under contract and the iPhone 6 Plus is going to be 299 under contract. And you are going to be able to pre-order them September 12th. This phone is going to be available in 19 countries and iOS 8 is going to be available September 17th. And that pretty much wraps up the iPhone 6. Let's move on to the next thing they talked about in this keynote. The next thing was Apple Pay. This is a pretty neat feature that's going to use a sensor on top of your phone. It's NFC and you're going to be able to make payments with a single touch. Like I mentioned, the top of the phone has an NFC sensor. It's gonna be pretty simple to use. You're just gonna to have to take a picture of your card, you go into your bank, you confirm it, and then you're just gonna need your phone to buy anything in pretty much any store, or at least just the major stores for now across the United States. 
you just put it up to the sensor. It's going to be next to the cashier. You just press the button or put your finger on top of the finger sensor or fingerprint reader, and that's it. The payment is made, and you're ready to go. No more carrying around all your credit cards or debit cards. You just need your phone, which you already carry in the daily basis. And if you're worried about security, none of this information or your personal information is going to go to Apple. It's all just going to be stored in your phone. It's going to be between you and your bank. That's it. You're going to be able to start using it October of this year, and it's going to include Visa, MasterCard, and American Express. After that, Tim Cook said one more thing. The crowd started to cheer because they knew the watch was coming. And no, it was not called the iWatch. It's called the Apple Watch. And as you may expect, this is a watch that's made out of premium parts with very unique software. And well, let's talk some more about it. Everything on this watch is going to be controlled by the dial or the crown. You're going to be able to zoom in, zoom out, scroll up and down, go through pictures, whatever you need to do it, you do it through that and you press it to go home. And not everything is controlled through the dial, it's just made like that. So you always have visibility of your screen and you don't have your fingers intruding your vision. It's a very unique design, it's a very unique concept, a very unique OS. This watch is just very unique. And if you were wondering, yes, this watch comes in two different sizes and three different categories. Two different sizes, I guess, one for women and one for men, just a small version and a bigger version. And the three different editions, which is just the Apple Watch, the Apple Watch Sport, and the Apple Watch Edition. And as you guys can guess, they're made out of different materials. And I just want to touch on this. The Apple Watch Edition, it's made, yes, out of gold. The bands on the watch are really easy to remove. You can put rubber, stainless steel, leather, anything you want. Apple got your back. You're going to be able to do it. Like I said, the OS on this watch is very unique. When you get a notification, you can view it, yes, on your watch or on your phone. And it's not going to vibrate really loud or make a really loud noise. You're just going to feel like a little pulse on your wrist that's going to let you know that you have a notification and you can decide to review it or not. And you can also decide on what notifications you want to receive on your watch or what notifications you just don't want to really receive. And the screen is not going to light up or anything. Like I said, you're just going to receive a little pulse. And if you want to view it, you just put your wrist up to your face or just raise your hand up and the screen is going to automatically turn on. It has those sensors that are going to capture whenever you put your wrist up. So it tells the watch to turn on so you can view your notifications and you can answer notifications with quick replies or through voice commands. You can even draw something on your watch and send it as a message. Pretty cool, right? And it does come with infrared and visible LED lights along with photo sensors to detect your pulse. So this watch is pretty much for everyone, for people who just like to look fancy with their watch, to people who like extreme sports, because yes, this is waterproof. And just to top everything off, to put the cherry on top, it has a very unique way to charge. You know how all your Macs come with a Mac safe that has a magnet on the end? Well, this watch also has a magnet on the bottom and on the charger. You just put it up to the back. It connects and it starts charging automatically. They do say it's going to hold battery for at least a full day. They didn't really talk about battery life in this watch, but it is going to work with all the iPhones from the iPhone 5 and up. So the iPhone 5, iPhone 5C, iPhone 5S, and well, the iPhone 6. It's going to be $249 and it's going to be released until next year. It's kind of a bummer, but I mean, I can wait. And one last thing, this is going to be compatible with Apple Pay. So if you don't want to take out your phone to pay, just put up your watch to the sensor and there you go. And that pretty much sums up Apple's event. They talked about the iPhone 6, Apple Pay, and the Apple Watch. So for the first time, we were all right about the rumors. And when I said that that was it for the Apple event, that was it for the Apple products. After all the products were announced, they were talking about music. Tim Cook was saying that the iTunes Festival was happening in London, and then they introduced U2, who played for the audience live. After they stopped performing, U2 and Tim Cook announced that they were going to release their album there and it was going to be available for everybody who had an iTunes account. It was going to be completely free. So if you have an iTunes account, go to the iTunes store and get yourself the U2 album. And after that was when the Apple event ended and everybody left really happy. But this is not where the video ends. After that, we got to see some pictures of what was the big white box that was outside the venue. It was an Apple gallery where everybody could walk in and get a hands-on feel on the iPhone 6 and the Apple Watch. I'll include some pictures here so you guys can see it. Pretty elegant looking. Or if you guys liked anything that was announced in this event, be sure to leave it down there in the comments. That was it for me. I was Cards with Wirefly, and I will see you guys in the next video.